All right. I'm wired on copy and I'm excited because today I get to review a distribution I have never looked at before. This GNU Linux distribution is based on Debian and this is GNU Sense. And we're going to look at that right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Alright, let's begin. Now before I start with today's review, first I'd like to mention that GNUSense originally got its name, according to the Wikipedia, it was originally called GNUSense. Hmm. Uh, I can't remember why they said that, but I just thought that was an interesting little uh, tidbit I'd throw at you. Now the reason I called this GNU Linux is because this distribution has the blessing of Richard Stallman, he uses this distribution himself, and, of course, the Free Software Foundation. And Linux distributions in this listing, such as Blag, uh, Dragora, Dynabolic, GNUSense, and all these others that are listed here, whenever I review one of these distributions, I will refer these distributions and only these distributions as GNU Linux. Distributions such as Ubuntu, Mint, and others like that that have non-free software, I will refer to as just plain Linux. All right, and I think I discussed that before on my zoo crew when we had that talk on to GNU or not to GNU. All right, and since we're here, uh, I got the web browser open. Thanks to whips.com, I was able to put together a nice little browser add-on for you guys if you're using Firefox or Chrome slash Chromium, either one of those. Uh, I have this little cup of Linux icon here. You can click on it and it will keep you up to date every time I send a new video up to my channel. Neat little browser add-on. There'll be a link in the show notes where you can get that. All right, let's get on with the review. All right, and here it is. Okay, now, GNU Sense, upon first glance, hmm, this looks like a Linux distribution from two years ago. And you would be right in, in that because of the fact that this uses GNOME 2. So great for those of you who love GNOME. But the thing is, I ran into some problems when I installed this. For instance, uh, I could not install the VirtualBox additions so that I could get the, you know, the image to fill my screen. Rather, I had to use XRander and do some meddling to get it to work. But the thing is, I did find instructions for installing guest editions only if you're using VirtualBox Open Source Edition. I'm using the regular edition, so maybe it just could be something there. I'm really not sure about this. So, yes, this is an older version of GNOME, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong here, but is my understanding that GNOME is no longer part of the GNU project? And I think version 2 of GNOME was, was where GNOME 3 isn't, but I know there's a dividing line there somewhere. Because we do right-click on About Panels, you will see that this is using GNOME 2.30.2. Very nice for those of you who want to run Compiz, because if you look in the Synaptic Package Manager, you do get the option of installing Compiz uh, 084, which is stable and has all the eye candy and special effects, unlike the, unlike the most recent version that doesn't have very many features at all and it seems like every version that Compass is releasing they're just stripping out more features and functionality and that sort of thing. Okay, so pretty much uh, you get a standard set of uh, applications with this. In accessories you get an archive manager, calculator, character map, uh, get it, a root terminal, you can search for files, take a screenshot, terminal, and time tracker. In games you get the standard suite of GNOME games with this. In graphics, you get the GIMP, Inkscape, Open Office Draw, and Xane Image Scanning Program. Okay, and then in Internet, you get the Akiga Soft Phone, Empathy IM Client, Epiphany Web Browser. We'll get to that in a moment. Evolution Mail, Ice Weasel, which is an unbranded, free as in freedom, Firefox. And then the Ramina Remote Desktop Client. In Office, you get OpenOffice.org. And a dictionary, of course, with evolution. And Sound and Video, Audio CD Extractor, Brazero Disk Burner, Cheese Webcam Booth, 
movie player, sound recorder, system tools to allow you to tweak this system and get the most out of it. And of course, some universal access tools uh, such as Dasher, which is a predictive text program. I'd never seen this before. I tried to play with it a little bit, but I couldn't quite figure that out last night. You also get an on-screen keyboard and Orca screen reader. A quick access to all of your places here. And then, of course, your system preferences located here and administration right here. Your logout screens are located here. This is great for those of you who are new to Linux and you never had an opportunity to see what GNOME 2.3 was all about. And then, of course, on the upper right corner of the screen here, a volume control. You get your calendar here, uh, a window selector. Um, you uh, get your universal access preferences up there as well. And then, of course, a battery indicator. Uh, for those of you who are on your laptops, on the bottom of the screen, the icon on the lower left will allow you to collapse all windows and show only the desktop. And on the uh, bottom right corner of the screen, you have uh, a desktop switcher, which gives you four desktops to choose from. Now, something of interest when I was going through this is I can't believe how outdated a lot of the software in the repositories is. Uh, for instance, you know, um, when I uh, looked into Synaptic because of the fact this is free as in freedom. So there is no installing uh, proprietary software. There is no documentation on how to do this because that defeats the point of having a distribution like this. If you, you want to run a distribution like this, if you want to run totally free software, okay, so it's not going to, they're not going to make it easy for you. Okay, so I figured, oh, all right, well, then I'll just do a search for wine and see what kind of version of wine they have in here. And it looks like they have version 1.01, .01, which is a pretty old and dead version. So if you want to run modern software with this version of wine, you're going to need to hold a seance to do it. Okay, and I noticed a lot of the other uh, applications in the, uh, in the Synaptic Package Manager are older applications like I had just mentioned with Compiz and that sort of thing. Also, another freedom that you get with this distribution is the freedom not to watch YouTube. Let's have a look here. All right, so for instance, if I click on a video here, the player will come up and you get Ganache. And when I attempt to play a video on this thing, it will either freeze up or not even bother to play at all. I tried this several different times. I just could not get a video to work on this. That's freedom for you, hey? And it looks like it's trying to load, but now the progress bar is going to fill up, but it's not going to play anything for me. And uh, we can right-click on this and see what uh, version this is. And that is Ganache 0.8. Point eight. But another thing that the Free Software Foundation does state on their website, one way that you can protect yourself from the NSA and PRISM is by not using uh, services as a software replacement. And I would assume that they would consider YouTube to be something of that nature. Okay, so until YouTube has full HTML5 support, you're probably not going to be able to watch very many videos in your web browser. And I tried this both in iSweasel and, of course, we're using Epiphany right now uh, to view this web page. So pretty much, you know, you're going to be limited. But the thing is, this distribution may be great for those of you who really want to run completely, totally free software. But there are caveats. You're not going to be able to do a lot of things that uh, you would be able to do with other distributions that are out there, such as Ubuntu, uh, Linux Mint, or Linux Lite, which is what I happen to be running right now. So don't expect any DVDs to work on this thing. If you have any uh, DVDs, video DVDs, you're not going to play them because uh, there's proprietary codecs that are required to get those working. So that's, that's a given. You're not going to get that in there. And uh, any proprietary software uh, that you may want to run is not in the repositories. And because this is Debian based, you can't just simply go in and install PPAs. So if you want to be free and have freedom at the expense of giving up a lot for that freedom, this is the way to go. At the end of the day, would I recommend this distribution to somebody 
who is just coming over to Linux or GNU Linux from Windows. Absolutely not. I would recommend a completely free GNU Linux distribution to those who have experience with Linux and have found alternatives to all of the proprietary software they were using in Windows because you're not going to get proprietary software working on this with ease. Okay, it does look good, but as I said, this software is older. But the thing is, it should also be a brick. It should run stable. I haven't had any issues with this running. And another caveat is if you want to do desktop compositing with Compiz or anything like that, your graphics card is going to have to be fully supported by this because I don't even think they're going to make it easy for you to install proprietary graphics drivers on this. I could be wrong. I was not able to put that to the test because I am running this in a virtual environment and I don't have free hardware with which to test these distributions on. So whenever I do a distro review, it is always in a virtual machine. And I think I will always do it that way anyhow, because that is how I test Linux distributions before I'll even run them on actual hardware. Mm -hmm.